Hey, hey, how y'all doing? This is Mr. Blows Your Minds coming again with part three. That's right, part three of the continued series of the original Rebels, a lost history. Now, I know some of you, they be hearing this and you might be like, well, I mean, how can you call them the original Rebels? I mean... Revolt did not start in Haiti. Well, you're right. You're right about that. It didn't. I mean, matter of fact, you can look here in, in this nation. You see that we can go back to like 1663. Uh, I think it was in uh, Glo Glo. I think it's Gloucester County, Virginia. I think that is one that has been marked in the history that talks about it but then I mean you could talk about the 1712 where you talk about in New York City that slave rebellion there uh, you're talking about um, I think it was like 1739 the Cato's conspiracy the, they call it I think it's called the Stone Old Rebellion uh, you have the another one another time in New York City we call the New York City uh, conspiracy I think that was about like 1741 and then you have uh, the general, General Prosser, you know, he was in the 1800s. You have, uh, uh, I think it was the St. John Baptist Parish in Louisiana, about 1811. Then you have, uh, I think they call it Fort, Fort, Fort Blount, I think it was Blount or something like that, in 1816. And then you got, you got Denmark Vesey, you know, his uprising in 1822. You got... Also, you got Nat Turner's revolt in 1831. So, when I say the original, you know, rebels, what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about revolts that end up with an L. You understand what I mean? If we was looking at this from a, uh, from athletics, competition, um, you can't be number one if you ain't got a win. You know what I mean? So we have to talk about the person, the only one, who's got a W. This is my reason for this topic. Many imitators, but only one original. Only one blueprint. And this is the reason why I say we must go and we must look at and study and understand. Now, moving forward. Um... I was talking about, you know, how uh, the relationship between Africans from different land masses, ge uh, from a geological or geographical areas. Um, we don't have the greatest relationship on the air. Again, I believe that there's something that divides us. Now, who put that division in there? Or is it just the simple fact that uh, it's an innate thing that we as melanated people have this you know, uh, disdain for. So, um, I don't want to dwell too much on this part here, but again, it is part of it. But what I want to really get back to is the fact that about this story here, I'm going to get it reverted back to, because see, I was talking about how in the 80s, the Haitians weren't allowed to come into America and a lot of people never understood why that was and I mean again going back in time and understand what happened back in uh, 1791 through 1804 um, the one thing that a lot of people may not realize and I may not have said at one particular time was the fact that you know Jefferson was only I think it was like the Secretary of State at that time you know what I mean and so when he a petition to Congress it was not he wasn't even the president at the time you see what I'm saying because later on once he became president that's where they had this embargo but one thing that needs to be brought out about is the fact that um, what's his name uh, Toussaint Overture right um, it was like about I think about 1799 or somewhere around there he slipped up and he allowed to have some kind of treaty with the British and that set up this blockade and they worked together with the British and the French and that's how they came in and they captured his ass right and it was during this particular time as this is how America 
uh, got the Louisiana Purchase. See, a lot of times I think when people say the Louisiana Purchase, they look at the state of Louisiana as that was only one particular land that had been um, purchased. I mean, but if you study and look at that purchase and look at how that land goes from Louisiana is the like the top of the point and and look how it spreads out and goes all the way from the south and goes all the way to the top up to the north. That was a really big piece of land bag uh, grab or bought. But I don't really believe that really took place. And, and the way we have to really look at it, did they do that in a legal manner? Because if you were not the title holder, how do you have the how do you have the deed to make any transactions when let's look at it because according to when the transaction supposed to took place was in 1803 you at war so how you you know you over here having a going out of sale goldblatt style type as sale and just before you out of the dough you know what i mean it's like how legitimate how legitimate is that so let's just look at it from that particular time and and, and the alliance that's supposed to have been with Haiti or Hispanola at that time with America. So we have to look at the fact that if the you know the British and the French was that's you know British I guess was kind of allying with the French, but America couldn't really step in because it had an alliance with them because you know quite be said is America always had a uh, they had trade going on with each other, right? Because you got to remember. Uh, a lot of people don't even look at the fact that what are some of the resources that are in Haiti, right? Because so, according to the way they depict everything, you see everything based on from a squalor position or from a uh, infestation of disease and poverty and, you know what I'm saying, hunger and all that other good stuff. But um, they, they were just like most of the other Caribbeans. They had rum and molasses. You know what I'm saying? They had coffee, they had cotton, they had sugar, they had bananas, they had cocoa, they had tobacco, they had rice. I mean, they even had precious metals on there. I mean, they said they had gold and silver. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they had copper too, uh, bauxite too, bauxite or whatever, how you want to pronounce that. But they had that too. So it's not like that Haiti, you know, people looking at Haiti from the standpoint of talking about how poor it is, it's only poor because of the band that was put on. You feel what I'm saying? It was when Thomas Jefferson got his ass in there then he decided to say I'm going to ban that shit or I'm going to put a damn embargo on it and that embargo lasts for how long? You see, because it's kind of funny when you see uh, when they had the earthquake there okay who was in front and who was the facing picture for America and they had them out there matter of fact if you were to go back you will see that at this particular time when this all took place you'll see a picture that has Bill Clinton uh, Bush and you'll see Barack Obama so that's food for thought right there check that out so anyway so anyway um, we can see that you know how is it that um, the United States at this particular time can turn this back on somebody and this is the question I'm asking and I'm, I'm putting out there for food for thought now accordingly they said there was only at this particular time and I guess that's the way the only way they're counting it but I'm saying three but they saying only two they're saying that there's only been two nations or two revolts or rebellions that has been successful. One, we're talking about it, and two, they're talking about America getting its independence from Britain or England. They count that. Can you believe that shit? That they're counting it like you got your independence from them, but really? Did, is really uh, that's a that's a game too, but what I say to be counted is, and what a lot of people may not know in history is, look at in Africa. I got a question posing for some of y'all before I go on. In Africa, 
what is the only independent country that has never been colonized before? Do you know what it is? It's Ethiopia. They fought the French too. And the French tried to uh, overthrow them. And remember, that's where you're talking about uh, Selesi, Hassi Selesi. I got some stuff on that too that I like to talk about at another time. That you know what I'm saying? When they'll be talking about how nobody came and tried to contribute to us over here, there's some gold that was given to the slaves that nobody seemed to remember. But anyway, so as Bisnia, which is Ethiopia, it too had fought and kept its land from being usurped. It's the only one that is over there that is not being stamped, has a stamp of approval from another nation. You know what I mean? Everybody else is either part of, uh, I think it's either, you know, Britain, France, Germany, not China over there. I mean, oh, but Ethiopia does not. It is totally independent. So let's go to the point here. So, now, there was Jean-Jacques, you know, uh, he was the original leader. He was the one that ended up taking over there, and he was running it. But it was, you know, Toussaint Overture, who they say was, was a pure Negro, okay? We don't get caught up in the name, but he was a pure Negro, right? And so, but he did slip up and he allowed that, and then that's how they got caught up. And this is how they, you know, they, they, they call, they say this is how they got the purchase. But anyway, so let's, let's fast forward this, okay? All that had taken place and so forth and so on. Now, they end up going over there, and the reason why, uh, the way they kind of, write the history of Haiti, they try to tell you, well, the government was over there, and it was, um, you know, mistreating, misappropriating, and, you know, the funds were not being distributed in yet, right? But what a lot of us don't realize is that, now, at the time of the rebellion, after 1804, uh, you got to look at the percentage of the people that are in Haiti, we would say 80% of the people there were pretty much agricultural farmer type people, right? So, you know, these people would till the ground and so forth. So, educationally, they were, you know, not going to be able to actually run a government and function in the educated way, right? So, what you had is, this is what he does all around the globe. Go watch a movie called... Um, Feast for All Saints okay and in that movie Feast for All Saints what you have is, is it, it, it's exactly about what I'm talking about here and the division that was there remember earlier I talked about the language that you had the French uh, Creole and then you have your Haitian Creole and again I told you when you really break it down Haitian meaning African and French meaning European now what you had is you had these mulatto children right and who were getting educated because they had uh, they had the one half they were uh, according a mulatto right meaning half so because of this half and, and looking white they were able to be able to go in certain places and get schooling so what ended up happening after the revolt, the rebellion, and once they got in full control, the people who end up running uh, Hispaniola or Haiti was the offsprings of the white man who was educated. Now go in your history and you'll find that every time he dropped these seeds, this is how he infiltrates in and gets back in and then he ends up finding a way because their loyalty ended up going back to them and then what ended up happening, they ended up getting back in. <laughs>